I'm Jeff Nimnick. And I'm Rick Paulette. And we're the hosts of The Last Stand. Coyote hunting is my passion. And coyote calls are my livelihood. And together we aim to bring you the best predator hunting tips, tricks, and tactics right down to The Last Stand. The Last Stand, presented by Lucky Duck Predator Calls. We are the masters of deception. Daniel Defense, manufacturing freedom. Swagger Bipods, shoot with confidence, shoot with swagger. Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. It's our first afternoon in South Dakota. It's going to be fun. We got a, we actually got two truckloads of guys on stands with us uh, this trip. We're going to have two cameramen and four shooters. Uh, so we're going to designate. We're going to put two guys on shotguns, two guys on rifles. Um, just primo conditions. Uh, real cold, fresh snow. Not going to get more than probably 20 degrees. Uh, the wind's not going to blow a whole lot. So you would think that, that the coyotes would just be very active wanting to come to the call. So you know, we pulled down in, into these old corrals. we got prairie dog towns that kind of surround uh, this river bottom. So about as ideal as you can get when it comes to cover, when it comes to habitat, food sources, whatnot. So we're going to walk back in here probably 600 yards dead calm. So I like to park and walk a little further in when it's dead calm just to hopefully not spook out any coyotes. So, we're gonna slip on in here, get down a little closer to the river bottom, where we can call this big flat, this big prairie dog down on the other side. So I'm gonna start off some lucky pecker, kind of non-aggressive, and then later in the stand we'll get we'll get kind of loud and more aggressive with fights and different things like that. I decided I'm gonna put the call clear down there on the on the frozen ice. So I walk down, set it out in the middle, and that way any coyote that comes to that edge has to come to the lip of that bank to look down in there, which is gonna give us a shot. There's no reason that coyote's gonna hang back. Coyotes are gonna be curious. They're gonna to come to a vantage point. So I'm rolling through sounds, uh, started off some lucky pecker. Anytime it's, it's real calm and quiet like that and cold, uh, you know, a higher pitch sound seems to be the, the ticket. So I go through lucky pecker four or five minutes, um, nothing shows up. So I decide to uh, switch over to some, some pup distress. And it's just a few minutes into that and hard to our left down the bank. Exactly how we had planned it, this coyote popped up. Thick cover, thick brush, but it came just enough to that edge to look down at the call, and Josh had a, a clear lane right down the bank. Josh is using my Daniel fence, set up with a Swagger bipod, and he'd never touched that gun until an hour before. He was able to make a quick adjustment on that coyote, squared up the cross there, 70 yards, boom, thumped the coyote right on the bank, shot, Josh. and less than you know an hour or two into the hunt on a new property, we had a coyote in the truck. Yeah, this is a little, little young male. There's an older coyote. Yeah, he's probably this year's. Yeah, this year's pup. Yeah, little male. He's a nice coyote though, man. Nice coyote. Yeah, what was that? Probably 75 yards. So it's kind of cool. I always like to kind of from where I'm at, you know, that coyote got to right here and he could look right over that bank. He could see the call. That's kind of why I had somebody set up here in case we had one come hard, but sometimes these younger coyotes, when you're playing those fights and things like that, they come to the call, they just don't want to. The big, big adult dominant coyotes will come bombing right in usually, but I was a little worried though. I saw that you had that little bit of brush right in front of you, but uh, it was no problem. You kind of threaded it right through there. Man, that was perfect. That was awesome. Shows the versatility of those swaggers. So, you know, we we're sitting on that bank and you were able to move. You had kind of logs to navigate and things and you were able to move them and Square it right up on him. All right, sun's a set, man. I'm, I'm glad you shot it. That's a, that's a hell of a drag back to the truck. <laughs> Wait a second. I thought we said Sean was dragging if we got one. <laughs> So the unique dynamic of this hunt was, obviously I know how to hunt coyotes, but Josh doesn't, but he knew the ranch really well, and I didn't know the ranch. So I'm kind of picking Josh's brain, kind of how this thing lays out, and he starts telling me about these pockets of prairie dog towns that are scattered along this river. And he, he mentions one particular area that kind of catches my attention, and, and we decide to head there for the last stand of the day. So we're chasing daylight at this point. We get into the stand, the temperature's dropping. It's, I think it was well below zero. My hands were freezing. 
Um, but I knew we had just enough time to get a coyote called in. It was pretty wide open. We were looking out across the Prairie Dog Town, you know, six, 700 yards. So I knew if any coyotes came in on this stand, they were gonna have to come from a long ways. So right off the bat, I get into some, some pup fighting, some coyote fighting, hoping to really trigger an aggressive response so that coyotes come to the call, you know, at a fast rate. Um, we're not a few minutes into the stand and Josh spots the coyote coming across the, the far end of the Prairie Dog Town. Now, generally speaking, if, if a coyote's making a straight line to the call, 99% of the time, I'll leave that same sound running, I'll leave it at the same volume, I'll just let it ride as long as that coyote's making ground and getting closer. But at any point, if that coyote starts veering off its approach and starts maybe wanting to circle downwind, you know, where it stops and hangs up a little bit, that's when I'll start looking to, to maybe switch up the sounds a little bit. So he's circling downwind a little bit. I don't think he's coming right at the call. So on this stand, we, we had plenty of coverage with Josh and I on the rifles. We put Luke down low and I purposely put them down a little low spot and had the call down in there just so that any coyotes that came across that prairie dog would have to come up over that lip to see the call, which would put them into shotgun range. But this coyote starts fading off to the right. He's kind of circling out, kind of heading downwind. Um, we knew we weren't going to get the shotgun kill. Um, so at that point, I'm just trying to make sure my fingers are warm enough to, to make the shot. I, I get moved over, I kind of anticipate where that coyote's gonna end up. And it was really cool to watch that coyote could hear the sound, but he couldn't see the call. And, and he was hopping up in the air out there in the Prairie Dog Town, trying to get that vantage point where he could see, but he couldn't. Um, and uh, it just got to the point where I like, you know what, this coyote's not gonna come any closer. Uh, he was about 200 yards. It's time to, to get him stopped and woo, woo. And uh, center of the crosshairs, slow squeeze, and and uh, two coyotes in the last two stands of the first afternoon. We just had to be a little patient with that coyote. Not not every coyote's gonna come hard right at the call, and that was that was no exception. He he just was making a circle on us, and any time a coyote gets out there at 150 or 200 yards and starts parallel in your position, it's time just to get him stopped and and shoot. Uh, you know, I didn't have to play the the revolution very loud. I'd, I haven't played it more than about 16, which is half volume. Um, when it's dead calm like this, that sound carries a long, long way. So we still have a little bit of light left, even though it's about 16 minutes on stand. Um, we have enough light to see here, maybe about five more minutes. So you never know. Another great coyote, man. Oh man, that was awesome. You know, we almost had two. Um, I had about a 450 yard shot, you know, late season like this, sometimes you get the smart ones and and he circled out there, sat out there and howled at us. Um, I underestimated the five mile an hour breeze we had, 223, you know, didn't cut the wind great, but I gave him about four inches of wind and, and needed to give him about eight and he was sitting down, just barely missed him. But, but either way, man, three stands, two coyotes. Yeah, great start to the trip. Can't ask for more than that, right? Second morning, our expectations are high. We killed two coyotes in three stands the afternoon before. Um, I get with Josh again. We start putting together a game plan on, on how we want to attack the remaining part of the, the ranch we had to hunt. It was one of those days where it seemed like if something bad was going to happen, you could just count on it. You know, we get back uh, to the truck after the first stand um, of the morning. It's 12 below, and Josh's truck has a flat tire. So we have to spend you know, 45 minutes messing with this tire. We get it plugged. Uh, we get some t some air back in it. We limp it back. Um, you know, we, we get it fixed up. We regroup, we head on out. Um, we were grinding, we were making stands. We just weren't seeing any coyotes. And for whatever reason, it's just, it just was one of those days. Um, you know, later in the day, I get my truck stuck. <laughs> um, you know, we were dipping and dodging snow drifts all day long. And uh, I just got to the point where I wasn't paying attention enough and I buried into a little low spot. Um, funny thing was, I, I was giving Josh and Luke some crap because the, the day before we got there, they had actually got his truck stuck. And 
I didn't think there was enough snow to get stuck, but so so they had their good laugh at me finally, but they were gonna hook the old Ford onto the, the Toyota and pull it out, and I said that just wasn't gonna happen, and I got to digging and, and broke myself free and got out of there without being towed out, so um, we kept grinding, and we got into the last stand of the day, and it was, it was just a, a exceptional stand. We came off a high bank, we're calling over miles of river bottom. Um, it started to spit some snow on us. We sat there 20, 25 minutes till we ran out of light and, and nothing showed up. Um, so as we're walking out of that stand, I asked Josh what we had going for the next day and I said, you know what? I said, let's come back in here first stand of the morning and uh, see if we can't kill this coyote in the same exact spot. So there's no rule about how long you have to wait to go back into an area and, and the stand we made the night before was, was such a great looking stand. I thought, you know, let's go and make that stand again because we didn't mess anything up the night before. We didn't educate any coyotes. We didn't shoot any coyotes. There weren't any coyotes that came to the call. So we, we slipped back down in there. We actually sat in our same little snow holes we dug. Um, the wind was in the perfect direction. Um, I start off the stand with some lucky pecker, um, nothing. About four or five minutes in, I switched some coyote fights and it's not two minutes into the, into the fighting. We spot two coyotes making their way down below us, coming through the trees. Get yeah. moved, Luke. I lost him. Now, I'm really trying to get Luke a coyote. We've already, Josh has already killed his first coyote on this trip ever. Luke, I'm trying to get him his first coyote ever. The coyotes get to the bank of the river and they start fading off to the right. The wind's blowing that way. We have a pretty steep angle down to shoot and the farther they get to the right, the less chance we're gonna have to get a shot. So Josh or Luke and I are trying to coordinate the one coyote would stop and the other one would go and then the other one would stop and we're trying to coordinate with the camera uh, on which coyote we're gonna shoot. We're gonna kill him right here. Luke, you want him? Ready? Woo. I'm on the left one. The left one, yeah, the left one. Take your time. Whoop! Whoop! Let him stop. There you go. Whoop! 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 Sun, the one in the sun. Lead one, lead one. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, back one, back one. Woo, 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 woo. 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 Get him. Good shot, Luke. Here, this one's going through here. And uh, finally, we get it all lined out. And uh, Luke, Luke gets one to stop and he makes a great shot and uh, kills his first coyote ever. That was pretty cool. Just had two coyotes come in right when he switched up a sound. Jeff was playing, I think, Lucky Pe Pecker initially and he switched to a fight sound. And those two came right away. We knocked one down, one got away. But that was pretty neat. Ah! I the man, that was awesome. Man, to be able to be up on a vantage point like this and watch them use the edges and watch them use the terrain as they're coming in, it's really cool to see. They are a smart animal. I really hope that was Luke because uh, that'd be his first ever coyote. That'd be pretty awesome. Uh, nonetheless, we're back on the board. It's, it was a struggle yesterday. Uh, we didn't call in a single coyote all day and, and you know, who knows what it was, but uh, we're off to a great start. I'm gonna kill this call down a little bit. Yeah, we're off to a great start now. So, uh, you know, it's hard to beat killing a coyote on the first stand. So um, now we just gotta figure out how we can get all the way to the bottom of the truck's parked way back up top. So it's gonna be a long drag getting him up. But Luke, first coyote, baby. <laughs> nice, heck yeah. So this is why I purposely let Luke shoot that coyote. As you can see, it's only 100 yards, but it's about 100 yards straight down this bank, too, so he had to earn his first coyote. 
That's awesome. You're doing great, Luke. Keep it up. You're, you're a third of the way there. So pretty much like the day before, we grind it out. Middle part of the day, we make four or five more stands. Conditions were really good. Um, we were seeing tracks. We were hearing coyotes howl off in the distance. But for whatever reason, the coyotes just weren't wanting to come to the call. Um, so middle afternoon, Tim ends up having to hit the road home. So we drop him off. Josh and I again make a, a last minute plan for the final afternoon of, of the hunt. And he tells me about a run. Uh, you know 10 12 miles away so we jump in the truck we head that way we get there you know with just enough light to make the last stand of the day we we specifically got in there a little further than maybe most people would just so we could be right on the bank of the river and we had a long stretch of river we could see probably three or four hundred yards one side and, and i thought you know what how cool would that be to get a coyote to come down the ice so once again i jumped off the bank i walked clear out onto the river and placed the call and i got back up on the bank and we're kind of getting situated and Luke looks over and says, hey, there's a coyote on the bank down there about 250 yards. And I look down and sure enough, there's a coyote standing on the bank just looking around. Well, Josh was set up cl closer to the coyote on the bank, but about 30 yards from us. So he hadn't even got his, his stick set, his swagger set up. He wasn't ready at all. And I look down and the coyote comes off the bank the and, and is trotting down across the river. Well, about that time I get the, the revolt fired up and uh, hit the call and that coyote stops mid stride right middle of the ice in the river kind of takes a look at us and sure enough here it comes right down the ice So the coyote is coming down the river like it read the script. Um, it gets to about 75 yards and I bump my remote and a different sound went off and the coyote kind of checked up for a minute. And I'm thinking, dang it, man, I just screwed this up because I really thought this coyote was gonna come right to the call. So I switched back to the sound I was at. Um, the coyote was still interested, but he had changed, his demeanor had definitely changed a little bit. He continues in just a little bit and he gets to about 50 yards and and he starts looking around and and the damnedest thing happens that the coyote just sits down right in front of us on the river bottom there and uh, we're kind of looking at each other wondering you know what's going on here there's some coyotes howling off in the distance and the coyote kind of looks over there and we're debating what to do and um i was to i was just getting ready to whisper over to josh to tell him hey let's just wait a minute there's nowhere that this coyote can go without us you know it can't get away at this point without us getting a shot Let's just keep calling and maybe we'll call in a second coyote. And about that time, the dang coyote lays down. It's laying there just looking up at us, looking around at 50 yards. And you know, none of us had ever seen anything like this before. We're kind of giggling and wondering what in the heck this coyote's thinking. And so I start running through some coyote fights and, and different sounds, trying to maybe draw in a second coyote for us to get a double. And after about three minutes, I think, you know what? The, the, no other coyotes are coming. So. I told Josh to go ahead and take the shot and he, you know, probably the only time in history he's gonna have a, a chest on yeah. laying down shot at 50 yards at a coyote. But uh, he hit the coyote kind of right in the chest and it kind of jumped up and spun a little bit. It was a dead coyote run and it, it went a little ways down the river bank and piled up in the snow. But just uh, an amazing last stand to cap off a great hunt.